Hi everyone, I'm Bonnie Krebs from Art Impressions and I am here at scrapbook.com to show you another one of our new releases, watercolor stamping. Uh, if you are new to this technique, you're gonna love it and I can show you in just a few minutes how you can create a beautiful watercolor painting just using stamps and markers and a wet brush. Honestly, it's that easy. And those of you who have done it before, a new uh, stamp set to add to your collection, it's gonna work with everything that you already have. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to use the mountain set. Uh, I love this and I've actually been working on it for quite a while to make sure that I got a mountain set that was really, really versatile and one that was really easy to do. So I don't want you to be intimidated by these things and think that you can't do it because honestly you can. It's super, super easy to do. You just gotta try it. So I'm going to use the mountain set and in this case I'm gonna use the larger one, this one right here. And then we're gonna add some more things to it. So we're gonna add a little cottage, this one right here. And this is from the mini cottages set. So we're gonna add this little house in the background. Uh, from the original uh, foliage set, we're gonna use the little tiny grass right here. Super, super versatile. I think that little grass might be in almost every project that I do. So these things you're gonna use over and over again. So you're buying it as a collection. You're buying a set, but you're gonna be able to use it with things that you already have and create more and more images. So also the tree sets. We're gonna use this guy right here in the tree set. And then in the mini flower set, this little one right here. So this is a combination of blooms and foliage right here. So we're gonna take all of that and we're gonna put it together in a little mountain set. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to use the mountains. We're going to start with this one first. This is the mountains. I've put on a big block and I'm going to ink it with two colors. I'm going to use a dark brown. This is a 969 and this one is a 565 and I'm going to color it with two colors. I'm going to start out with the brown and I'm just going to ink it. Use the side of your marker and just run it across this whole thing just like this and then go back over it again with the blue. So just like that. And I'm going to stamp it off because I don't want this to be too dark. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and I'm just going to stamp it off. Just like that. I don't want it too dark. And now I've got a lighter amount of ink on here and I can stamp it into my, my background just like this. And there you go. That's our starting point. Always start with your basic image. And you know, there's something intimidating about a white sheet of paper. And when you have a starting point, I feel like that takes a little bit of the stress out of it. It does for me. And I always know where I'm going after that. So step one is always stamp your basic image. Then dip your brush in water and pinch it off. So you can see how flat my brush is right here. I've really taken the majority of the water off. So now we're going to start by pulling the color out of the lines and the color is in the lines. So what we want to do is kind of follow the lines and you'll see a mix of colors start to come out. And just pull these lines down just like this. And the more that you play around with these stamps, the more confident you'll get as to where to put the color. But for now, just start where the lines are the thickest. Where you have lines close together, that's where the color is going to be. So just keep bringing this down, just like this. Stay in each section. Don't run your brush across the whole mountain range. Just stay in each area. That's really, really important. And continue these lines. You can see how they kind of stop. You wanna keep dragging those lines and bring them down. So I'm going to now add a little color to the background. And I'm taking a warm light blue, and I'm taking that dark blue. This is the dark blue we started with, the 565. And I'm just gonna mix those together on a palette. So that's the nice thing about a palette is that you can create your own color combinations. And you can just mix these two together. So we can create kind of a warm sky in the background. And I'm just gonna brush this on. Don't stress out about this. And just add a little color to the background. And call it good. Just a little bit of blue in the background and we are good to go. Okay, so now let's go on to the next step and that's to add our little house into the foreground. So we're gonna ink this in two colors as well. We're gonna start with the dark blue and we're just gonna use the side of our marker again and then go back over it again with the brown. This is the dark brown, so the same combination of colors, the dark blue and the dark brown. 
And again, I'm going to stamp that off. I want this to be really, really light. And what we don't wanna see is an outline in the background. We wanna see a cute little house that just kind of fades back into the background. We don't wanna see an outline around it. And I'm just gonna stamp that now right in front of my little mountain range. And you can see it's very light and that's exactly how we want it. Don't just take that stamp. You know, like some of us stampers, we really try to get a really good impression so we just mash it into the paper. Try not to do that, just a light, even, soft impression. And then next step, dip your brush, pinch it off so that it's very flat and begin by pulling the color out of the lines. And this is what creates that three-dimensional impression. So we're taking a one-dimensional stamp and we're turning it into a three-dimensional little cottage. You always wanna leave a highlight at the top. That's really, really important to leave a highlight at the top where the light is hitting the roof. And then in here, I'm adding just a little bit of color into the windows. My brush, this is the fun part, adding the color. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more of this blue and I'm gonna just add a little blue over here. This side of the cottage is gonna be in the shadow. And so we wanna make this a little bit darker than this over here. I'm just gonna take a little of this blue now and put it back in here. And you can see why it's so important to stamp that lightly. Uh, like I said before, we don't wanna see an outline around this little structure. So I'm gonna add a little more color now to my palette. This is the dark brown. And I'm just gonna add a little color to the door. Just brush it on. Like this. And you can see the highlight at the top. Always do that. Uh, kind of resist the urge to color in everything the same and color in line to line because when you do that, you make things flat. And this way, it looks like that roof has light bouncing off of it and it gives it a little more contour. Super, super fun. And that's all we have to do with that. See how easy that is? So fun. So now let's put our trees in. And I'm gonna take this little this little um, fir tree, and you can see it's pretty big. So I don't need to use this whole thing uh, in, in perspective to that little cabin. But the thing about using markers is that we can use the parts of the tree that we wanna use. So I'm just gonna ink part of it. So you can see, I'm just gonna ink down about two thirds. So about to there. And when I stamp it, I'm just gonna walk it kind of uphill. And I created a little valley for this cottage. So I'm gonna do that again. Ink about two thirds of it. Stamp it next to the cottage and then just kind of walk it up a little bit. And now I'm gonna dip my brush in water, pinch it off and just soften the lines. So I'm just touching all these little lines. So, super easy. Make sure that you pinch your brush off. That's so important. Every time you dip it into the water, pinch it off so that you don't get too much water. You can see these lines are so tiny and we don't wanna wash the lines away. We just wanna soften them. And pull this color into the background. You can do that too. And let's take a little bit of this blue and just extend this mountain down. Put a little color back in here pull some of this color from the trees out. You know, the more that you do this, the more confidence you're gonna get, I promise. So you can see how we've created a little valley here just with the trees. And we're gonna come in now with that little tiny grass. So here's that little grass that I said I use in almost every project. And I'm just gonna ink it up. So just like this. And just kind of stamp it along the front of these trees. And I'm gonna ink it up again and stamp it again. And on this side, and just kind of walk it down. And it's the same process. It's stamping and then adding water. It's just the same process every time. Pulling that color out of the lines. Okay, so now let's do something in the foreground so we can bring this little guy in. It's a little flower, little wildflowers. And we're gonna use two colors on this. So you can see where the vines are here, the grasses, and then the little blooms on the top. So I'm gonna ink those. So you can see I've inked the little 
the little grassy part with a green. This is a dark green. This is actually number 249. And then I'm going to use the purple and go across here and get all the blooms with the purple. So just like that. And I'm just going to stamp it, kind of walk it along just like this. And I'm going to do it again. So ink the bottom part with the green and then ink the top part with the purple. And walk it along. Just like that. And you can kind of fade it out a little bit. So you can see I've kind of followed that same contour of the valley. And let things fade out. That's the thing about watercolor is it doesn't really end. It just kind of fades out. And sometimes that can be intimidating. But if you kind of keep that in mind and think, I doesn't have to, everything doesn't have to be concrete. And then just pull this grassy part down. So we've got the green in the, in the foreground. And then we can pull some of this green down. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. I think we are about finished with this little project. See how easy that was? One thing to do left, sign and date. Always sign and date. Every time you do these, they're going to be a little bit different. And how cool to give someone an original work of art like this. They're going to love it. So once you've finished your little project, your little watercolor painting, put it on a card or put it in a frame and give it away to someone. Uh, people just love these things because, uh, first of all, you've taken the time to do it. They think that you've spent hours and hours on it when actually uh, they only take a few minutes. And they appreciate it so much that you've created something beautiful like this. And it doesn't take much. I've used my uh, hexagon double stitch dies and just cut out this little uh, image and then a little background. And really, it can be super simple and easy and good for any occasion. Just put it on a card like this and you have a beautiful one-of-a-kind card um, to give away to someone. All of these are available now at scrapbook.com. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.